Hi, so we are here to give you a little crash course course on the Linux shell. So what's the shell? So the shell is an old term which basically means this raw interface to the operating system. So you see here a prompt which has some information and you type some commands and push enter and run it. So you may wonder why do you need to know this to do whatever you may be doing. So first off, let you do some things you can't do otherwise. So in the age where we have many graphical programs, well, graphical programs don't let you do whatever you may need. So it only lets you do what someone else has programmed. But with the shell, you're basically programming the use of other commands inside of your system. And it's very often that you'll get to some point where you try to do something and then you say, oh, how do I do this? And you search online and it says, oh, copy and paste these shell commands and then you can do it. So that's basically the level we want to get you to right now to be able to copy and paste commands and do some basic things. Second off, it lets you automate things. So if you can type something once, you can put it into a shell script and do it many times. So that means that once you go from doing some small experiments on your computer to doing giant experiments across an entire cluster, you're able to easily do that with almost no work, no extra work. And last of all, it actually is more efficient once you start using it. So you may think that it takes a lot long, longer to type things, but once you start doing it, you'll find that you can get things done much faster. So let's get started. So the basic syntax is we see here a prompt. This prompt has my username, my computer name, and then the directory I'm in, and then a place where I can type things. So you type a command and then you push enter and it happens. So here I ran the list command or ls. So this lists the files that are in a current directory. So you can also have um, arguments to these commands. So ls, a space, and then a, another option like the dash l option, which means long listing. So I push enter and I see it's the same files here, but a longer version of them. So you can combine these different options. So for example, you can do ls, dash l, and dash a together like this. Or you can do, um, you can give it other non-option arguments. Like I will ls this directory red here and push enter. Okay, so let's look at how you would view these files here. So as you see, this is a directory where I've downloaded some books from Project Gutenberg. So I will, um, let's say we want to look at this file called notes.txt here. First, I'll use the cat command, cat um, notes.txt. So cat means concatenate. Basically, it prints a file to the screen, it writes the file out. So we see in this file was just says, the works of Edgar Allan Poe, duh, 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 duh. this is a book that I might want to read sometime. So let's say I want to cat a longer book, like A Christmas Carol and I push enter, I notice that it's a bit too long. There's all these things that got printed here. So we need a way to see, um, to see and scroll through this. So we have a command called less, L-E-S-S. -S. So I'll use this on a Chris, uh, Christmas Carol and push enter. And here we see, so it's a file. I can use the arrow keys to scroll down. I can um, use uh, the page up and page down to go, and I can quit by pushing Q. Of course, there's a lot more commands. Let's say I want to edit a file. So I want to edit this note.txt file. So there's many different editors you can use from the shell. I'm going to use the one called nano. Uh, notes.txt, and I push enter, and here's the file. So I'm going to clarify that this is my wish list. And push enter twice. So now to exit nano, we see down at the bottom, it says 
control X is exit, the caret means X. So I push control X and then it says save. I push Y and then I push enter and it's saved. So let's look at notes with less nail. And yep, what do you know? It says my wish list on here. So we can also handle these files other ways. So let's use the ls command to list the directory. And I see there's also this directory called new and called read. So let's say I've read A Christmas Carol. I will move the book to um, the read directory. So I'll use mva Christmas Carol, and I move it to read and push enter. So here the command is uh, first the command I'm running, then with mv it goes you have the um, files you want to move and then finally the directory you want to move them into and I push enter and it's done. If I ls I see a Christmas carol is not here. If I list red then I see that uh, it is in here now. So you can ask why are all these commands so short? Well, just like in normal speech, whenever you have something you type often, it tends to be short. These commands are very old and back when there was limited screen space and typing um, was perhaps slower. So, well, we're left with it, but it still makes sense now because it's a lot faster. So let's see what else. There's the CP command. Let's say I want to make a copy of Moby Dick. Copy Moby Dick. So here I called it Moby Dick .copy. and I push enter. I type ls and I see that it's here. So notice that when I ran cp, it didn't print anything. It didn't say copy successful or anything like that. So this is because if a command works, it just usually assumes that it's done and then doesn't say anything else. So if you don't see any output, don't worry, that's just the way life is. Let's say I want to remove this edited copy now. I can use the command rm moby dick dot edited dot copy. And then again, it doesn't say anything because it worked ls. Let's say I want to remove a file that doesn't exist. So notice when I try to do something that can't be done, then it prints the error message. Okay, let's see. So we're um, in the directory called shell intro here. So I can see the full path if I type the command pwd. So here my full path is home rkdarst, which represents my home directory, and then something called shell intro, which I basically made for this video. So if I want to go to, um, let's say I wanted to list this directory red, I do ls red, and I see a Christmas Carol Frankenstein. If I use the command cd, which means change directory, I can cd to the red directory. And then if I ls, notice I list directly what's in here. So ls, like all of these commands, operates in the directory that you're currently in. So if you're doing something, you might want to change directory to it so you don't have to type the full path. Of course, sometimes you're just doing one thing there and it's better to stay where you are and not type the full path. So if I want to list the directory I just came from, I can list dot dot. So dot dot means the parent directory of where I am. So I do that and I see it was my original directory. Uh, let's type pwd to confirm I'm in a directory called red here. And I cd to dot dot and I come back to shell intro. Okay, so how do you get help on commands? So most commands, if you type ls, for example, ls, you can type dash dash help, and it will give you a command that says all of the different options are on it. So here it says ls option file. So it says you can give it options, then you give it file names, and dot 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 means multiple file names. You can also get help by typing ls, uh, with a, just a dash h instead of dash dash help. But notice it doesn't work for ls because these help commands always depend on the command that you are running. It's not part of the operating system itself. 
So here the dash h command means something else. So you can use also for more information the man command. Man stands for manual. So if I type man ls, I get a manual page on it. So this browser here is also the less browser we just saw. So that's part of the way that Linux and Unix tend to work. They have all these little programs that work together and let you do really powerful things without having to do, without having to have complicated programs. So I'm gonna use the command slash in less, which means search. So I'll do slash and dash H and push enter. And it scrolls down and it shows me this is um, dash H means human readable. So it's something about printing the sizes in a human readable format instead of just using bytes. If I wanna search more, I can use the commands capital N or lowercase n to search down and keep scrolling down or capital N to search back up again. And again, I push Q to exit less. Okay, so you may have noticed that as I was typing here, I usually didn't type the full commands to things. So let's say I type ls a and then dash and I push the tab key. And notice the entire book here, a modest proposal, gets tab completed. Or I can type ls n and I push tab, nothing happens. Why? I'm gonna push tab again and it lists two different things here, new and notes. So there's two directories that, or two files or directories that start with the same thing. So it gives me the option. And then I type O and then I push tab and now it can figure out that it's notes. So basically most of the time you don't have to go copying and pasting file names. You don't have to type the whole thing. You just type a few letters and you push tab if it doesn't work, you push tab a few times and it lists everything. So you rarely ever need to use either ls or type the whole thing. Okay, you can also use history. So if you push the up arrow key, you notice that you can go up to the previous things you've typed. So I push up once and it's the previous command. I push up twice, it's the command before the previous. And then I can use my arrow keys left and right to go here. Let's say I wanted to make a copy of this. I type copy, CP, I scroll back to the end, A, modest. So I push tab, to tab completed again, and then dot edited, dot txt, and push enter. So this is, you should be able to start seeing how this becomes quite fast, faster than using the mouse even. So next we have the file system. So there's different directories here. So if I type pwd, there's two things to notice. There's slash, which is the very beginning of the uh, entire operating system storage. So in Linux, everything is stored under slash. So notice there's a slash home here. I can do ls slash home, and then get some things, rkdarst and get more things, and shell intro, and then I see this. So every file in Linux is part of a tree um, of directories and directories and directories and so on. So we'll talk more about this later in a different little video, but just be aware that it's arranged like this. There's some special things like the tilde is your home directory, which is where all of your files are. So from here, I'll cd back to shell intro. Okay. Um, yeah, there is this variable dollars home. So this is a little Easter egg you'll see later, but when you see a dollar sign, that means a variable that's contained within the shell itself. So this shows that I could use this variable to go to my home directory, like such. Okay, so that's basically it. So this is all you need to know in order to get around with the shell and do the most basic kinds of things. So what might come next? So of course there's more commands and so on, but maybe the most interesting thing will be once you start doing shell scripting itself. So shell scripting lets you take all of these same commands you know and put them in a file and then do it over and over again. In fact, let me show you something here. Um, 
This is a little shell script. Well, not really a shell script, but I just copied the commands and pasted them in a file. So I can use this to set up the very directory you just saw if I ever needed to make this video over again. Okay, so there's a few advanced things I wanted to talk about. First is pipes. So let's say I cat a modest proposal.txt. Okay, there's a lot of stuff in here. So let's say I wanted to figure out all of the, uh, let's see, what's the word? Let's say every line that contains the word V. So there's a separate program that does that called grep. So if I grep for V, um, then every line that grep gets that has V, it prints. Every line it doesn't have isn't printed. So I connect them with this vertical bar, the pipe symbol. So let's do this. So I see a ton of lines here. Uh, this is all the license and so on. But here we see lines of the book. Every one of them has V in it. Let's show that it works if I put the, 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 the with a bunch of X's. So there's no lines like that. So by using these pipes, it lets you connect stuff together. And you have lots of little commands, each of which do a simple thing. And you program them together to do more powerful things. So in this case, you would probably grep it like this. You would do grep the, the first argument is the thing to search for. And then um, you give the book name, a modest proposal.txt, like such. Let's grep for the word play. Okay, so yeah, play is not in there so much. How about we grep for proposal? Well, there's not that many words proposal in there. Uh, let's say another thing about grep. If you give it the dash i option, then it will also search for capital letters. Or really, it means case insensitive. Okay. So next is process control. So let's say I'm looking at, I'm editing notes.txt, and I want to um, add another file name already, or I want to add the books I've already read. So I'm in nano and I want to see what's there. If I push control Z, and then I get back to the shell, I can run ls and see what's here, and I can copy a book name, for example, this, and then I can push FG to go back into here and then paste the book name. So there's some other things to do. So for example, I can do control Z, Z to go back and I can type jobs to see which things are running. If this was actually doing some computation, I could type BG to put it in the background. Um, in this case, it doesn't really do much. Uh, so, uh, why is it? So it's here twice because I think I already had nano notes.txt running in the background before I started this course because I forgot to close it. So I foreground and I exit and save, and then I can cat notes.txt and I see it's there. So that's basically it. So if you're getting ready for some other course that uses the shell, you should have a good preparation for getting by. And if you're learning this on your own, well, have fun and keep learning. Thanks a lot.